I have so much to say about Stardew Valley. The game's just like Harvest Moon, which was one of the best games in the world. Except I never got to play it. But that's besides the point. I so many questions about this game. Have the people you can marry been mingling with each other? You know, wink wink. Is Abigail really Pierre's daughter? Are the dwarves really aliens who tried to come and take over our planet but failed because some idiot forgot to replace the one cog of the engine before they left, causing them to crash into a mountain and lose all safety equipment that saves them from harmful rays of the sun, which is now keeping them from taking over the world? <sighs> nah, I'd rather talk about the war effort. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. This is Forgotten Camel with the gamer's opinion of the apparent war that the country based in Stardew Valley is fighting. That's right, Stardew Valley is at war. Or to be more precise, Stardew Valley's country, the Ferngal Republic, is at war with another country called the Gotoro Empire. Now, most players would hear mention of it by making enough hearts, which can be considered relationship points, with Sam, in order to enable a scene that activates upon visiting the beach at year one. Sam is with his brother Vincent, who is playing in the sand. Vincent then turns to his brother and asks a very serious question. Is dad coming home soon? I hear they're killing our soldiers by the thousands. This is what got me interested. I was like, wait, there's a war going on outside this game? Wait, what's the name of this country then? What is the country we're fighting? Does this game reflect real life history? Will my toe ever stop hurting? Oh, sorry, that last question was irrelevant. Um, I had so many questions that I just had to dig deeper, but the game mostly mentions the war with Sans family, which has very little information. Even so, I started there anyway. The father involved in buying the war is a man named Kent. We don't see Kent until we finish year one, but we can at least find out what timeline this takes place in. Now most people believe that the timeline of this game is set in the 1940s, World War II. I mean, it makes sense, Ken did say that he was giving sashimi in the prison camps and said that he was desperately trying to forget that. This also suggests that they tortured him and Japanese prison camps were infamous for their torture. Now, they made quite a few movies that shows war crimes committed in Japan. Also, Vincent did say that they were killing Fungal soldiers by the thousands, and the Japanese were killing American soldiers by the thousands as well. Tens of thousands even. So that's a done deal, it must be World War II, right? Wrong. For the people who claimed that the war was America and Japan, it was really not that out carefully. For one thing, the Japanese Empire, as I said, was killing Americans by the tens of thousands in the course of four years. So if the Godoro Empire wasn't the Japanese Empire, who are they then? While I haven't really focused on this part of history, I believe that the war takes place in northern Vietnam. A war that lasted for 20 long years. Wow, that's a great theory! Good thing MatPat isn't working on this yet. <clears throat> I said, good thing MatPat isn't working on this yet. Dusky, I'm trying to make a joke here. Can, can you please just go... 
You know what? Never mind. I, I, I'll take it. So what makes me think that this game is set in the Sundays? Well, let's take a look at the start of the game. A little after that. Too far. Okay, close to the start of the game, your character is working at Joja Company. What you see is big bat monitors. These type of monitors can range from the 1970s to the early 2000s. Companies have also started using these computers in offices during the 70s. So, there's our first evidence. What else can we use to prove my theory? Well, if you reach Eight Hearts with Sam, he'll invite you to his first gig. If you go there at the end of the concert, he'll say that you can find copies of his music with a cassette. And the first cassette, or compact cassette, was introduced during the 1960s by Phillips. But Camel, what about the plasma TV you can buy at Robin's house? Well, I thought about that too, and you know what? The plasma TV wasn't created till the early 1970s. The war didn't officially end until 1975, and even after that, there was still fighting for several more years. This actually enforces my theory that it was Vietnam. If you notice, many of the single males don't really have much to worry about. In fact, many of them are happy and are working for their own dreams and inspirations. Why is that? Well, the war ended. After 20 years of fighting and constant restraint for the government, as well as growing hate for the war, the war was declared over. No one has to be drafted anymore. People can finally worry about what to do with their lives instead of worrying about the young soldiers overseas. I mean, look at all the men. Most of them are living in their parents' or their grandparents' home. They couldn't have been old enough to, at the time to be drafted. Well, maybe except with the doctor, but that would mean the town wouldn't have anyone to go to for miles if someone got sick to her or her. And who would want to move to a ghost town if everyone died because they had no doctor? Okay, maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration, but it's a possibility, right? Right? Thank you for watching this Gamer Opinion. Unfortunately, this video is a little short. I had planned to talk a little bit about Kent, the man I'm pretty much interested in, but to be honest, I didn't cover everything about him um but i have written a short script that i will put in the description below and hope you enjoy it and sometime later i'm going to add a little more about him and hope i hope you find it interesting anyway thank you for watching this gamer's opinion and good day